Welcome to Skeptico, where we explore controversial science and spirituality with leading researchers, thinkers, and their critics. I'm your host, Alex Sikaris. Today, we welcome Dr. Shiva Ayadure to Skeptico. Very interesting show. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, any way you look at it, Dr. Shiva is a brilliant guy, accomplished guy. Really, his story is the embodiment of what we still think of as the American dreams, slums of Mumbai, member of a crippling Indian caste system that we often forget still holds a lot of sway in Indian society today, outlawed, but, you know, we'll, we'll, hopefully we'll have a little bit of time to talk about that. But somehow the guy that you see on the screen and that we're talking about, he has the right stuff. He goes to school. I, I heard that in your high, high school math, you completed all the high school math courses by the time you were 12 years old. Graduated when you were 14. It, it, that's basically right, right? Yeah, I mean, I created the first email system when I was 14 in my high school that have any more math classes to give me. So I ended up going to NYU in a special computer science program. And what we know as email today is what I created as a 14-year-old kid before I came to MIT. Yeah, we'll talk about the email thing in a minute. That kind of picks at me a little bit, so we'll talk about that. But you go on, you get multiple degrees from MIT, like you just mentioned, including a PhD. You get a Fulbright scholarship. You start these businesses. Just an incredible life story. In 2020, you ran for the, the U.S. Senate in Massachusetts, and you did eventually lose, and I want to talk about whether Trump did a rug pull on you on that thing or just how you felt about that situation. You lost to Whitey Whitemeyer, who went on to lose two to one to the Democrat, who it was really a locked up Democratic thing to begin with, but you kind of fought the good fight. And along the way, you just take on all these kind of nuclear issues that you're not afraid to take on, vaccines, voter fraud. You're out there really early on saying, the, just the super straightforward, like, why are we forcing people to take these vaccines beyond questioning how efficacious they are or how safe they are? You're also asking just the basic question that got lost in that of, from a political standpoint, you know, why are we being forced to do that? So just as a way of kind of wrapping up this intro, because we are going to have to kind of talk about a lot of different things. You kind of take on everybody in sometimes in a way that agitate some people. I mean, you take on people that we wouldn't expect you to take on as a kind of guy who ran for the United States Senate as a Republican. You're taking on Tucker Carlson. You're taking on James O'Keefe at Project Veritas. You're taking on Joe Rogan. You know, everybody is in your, your, your crosshairs and you've been coming down pretty hard on him. And now lately, what we'll talk about is your latest thing, your movement, truthfreedomhealth.com. So I'm just trying to lay out the whole playing field here. There's a lot to talk about. Super, super excited to have you on, Dr. Shiva. Thanks so much for being here. Great to be here. So I guess since you hit the email thing, let me push back on that. Like, here's the objection that I have and I think some other people have that we don't always hear. Dude, what you did is incredible. You're 14 year old and you wrote an incredible program, Inbox Outbox, in 1981, a program for email. In the 1980s, I was at the University of Arizona getting a PhD. I wrote the Artificial Intelligence Expert System. I went on to sell it to a bunch of Fortune 500 companies and then started an AI company. I would never say that I wrote the first PC based expert system. Because there were other, it was out there in the thing and other people were doing it. I just saw it as a way to make money. You saw it as an assignment. To say in 1980 that like there weren't any messaging systems, that's why I think people push back from the tech community saying, wait a minute, computer programmers don't call those really brilliant programs like the one that you wrote. They don't call it an invention. You don't have to agree well, with well, me, but well, you get the well, pushback. Well. No, I don't get the pushback because we're going to talk about a lot of things today because if a white guy did it, you wouldn't say that because they say Ray Tomlinson invented email and you don't have a problem with that. Let me get to the heart of this. I do have a problem with that. 
Well, no, no, no. Let me get to the heart of this. By U.S. law, I can hit it at many, many different ways. Um, but hopefully you'll understand this and the importance of this at a very deep level. When Mozart wrote his symphonies, do you question if he wrote them? Well, let's go on. <laughs> no, do you? I want to ask you. I, I, I don't know crap about uh, music well, no, I, 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 to I begin with. That. Okay. So it's the yes or no question. Do you question them? Again, I'm trying to be straight up with you, Dr. Shiva. I don't know crap no, no, about just, music because there's, there's a lot wait, of people wait, that wait, you just gave a long monologue. Okay. So if you want to have a discussion, let's have a discussion. So I want to ask you if when people say blah, 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 invented something, do you question that? Generally, yeah, I do. Cause I'm kind of a skeptical kind of person. All right. Here are the facts. You can go pick up uh, Walter Isaacson's book, which he wrote in the middle of the so-called fabricated controversy on who invented email. Cause when you look at the facts, it was a 14 year old brown skinned Indian kid in Newark, New Jersey, who invented it. There's in fact, no controversy except for people want to fabricate a controversy. And, and that's a much, much deeper issue. A friend of mine who runs Business Insider, when he came to know about it, Kevin said, you know, what's really fascinating about the story is why is there even a controversy? And that's what the real story is. So here's a kid in 1978, by the way, who takes the entire inner office mail system, not just inbox, outbox, but let's get it very specific because facts are very important and people tend to brush over them and it's inconvenient for them. And even though sometimes they don't even know why it's inconvenient for them, the inbox, the outbox, the folders, the drafts, every single feature in that inner office mail system, every single feature, attachments, registered mail, every single feature you see in modern email systems. Okay. Fact one wrote 50,000 lines of code in what was known as a scientific program called Fortran, had to write all the memory handlers at a time when in December of 1977, which we found this about 20, 30 years later, a scumbag, technical term, David Crocker, who later, um, why did you bring up the inventor of email site? Because I brought up the TechDirk site because I thought yeah. these guys, from my perspective, gave a pretty good account or pretty no, fair they they gave, you no, sued they him. You sued him for defam and defamation. And we won the Tucker lawsuit. You lost. Okay, listen, if, you, if you want me to talk about it, I can, and we can have a discussion. But if you're going to break up TechDirk, a guy that we sued. And you and lost. Won, what's that? We didn't and lose. You lost. No, we didn't. We won the Gawker lawsuit. This was a different lawsuit. It was an opinion did lawsuit. Did they pay you money? Gawker paid me $750,000 and they forced to remove three defamatory articles. It's interesting. You don't want to bring that up. Well, I, I wasn't aware of that. Did Tector, Tector well, yeah, that claims, Tector claims that you didn't, that uh, they didn't have to pay you any money and they can still run. Yeah, because no, 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 but they settled out of court because we were going to continue the lawsuit to an appeal and they were forced to put links. But why don't you bring up the Gawker lawsuit that we won? I, I'm, I'm happy to do that. Do you want me to wait? Oh, but, but I'm saying that up. Look, you're bringing this up with the assumption because you don't want to listen to the facts. And the visceral reaction to that goes at a very deep issue that you don't want to talk about. And if you want to talk about that, we can have a discussion. But if you're going to bring up garbage, we should just end the interview. Well, it, that that will always be your option here is but to, you're talking about being a skeptic but you're not even allowing me to bring up the facts I, i'm i'm totally willing for you to bring up this the facts i mean or just bring, let me know, up, let me know when you it. want me to talk or let me know if you want me to end the interview but you haven't really addressed where i was coming from no you aren't no because you've already made an assumption i'm going down the facts and you're bringing up a garbage thing to what we won in federal court in fact in bankruptcy court and you weren't even aware of that well Correct. I was not aware of the right. Well, but I aware am aware that they still have. I am aware that you sued them for defamation, and they still have their article up there. And their no, they were forced, are, wait, 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 wait. You don't even know the background. They were forced to put up a link to the actual facts. So, right. going to have a conversation like this because I'm a scientist and an engineer, and you seem to just not want to have that conversation. 
Okay. So if you want to have the conversation about who invented email and you want to get over potentially your own racism, we can have a discussion about that. And I want you to explore that. Are you yeah. willing to do that? Yeah, yeah, I'm willing to do that. I think that's that's such a crazy. No, place no, no, to no, take no, it. because I think you should be willing to explore that. Because when Walter Isaacs, in the middle of this controversy, wrote the innovators of the digital revolution, they're all white people. Are you aware of that? Yeah, I don't, I don't really like that. No, no, I think we should have a longer discussion about this because doing tidbits like this is a disservice to you as a human being, but also to your viewers. I take this very seriously because a 14 year old brown skin Indian kid did invent email. In fact, there's no controversy. And if you the want controversy to. Controversy is you wrote the, the controversy, and that's what I was trying to get across with. No, no, why don't you actually listen to the person who's alive, who was primary, and that's a disrespect that you're doing you right now. You just wrote a computer program. What's the big deal? Oh, really? Invention of email. It's like, okay. come on, dude. Let's have a good, let's 1980. have a, how about this? When you want to become a mature human being and you want to have a conversation, we'll do that. But right now you're coming to it with presumptions and I find it interesting to call yourself skeptico. What it really means is that you have predefined agenda and a goal. But if you want to have a, do you want to have an actual conversation, go through the facts as a human being? Well, I did. I don't think you've responded to any of the things. Do you want to have a conversation as a human being about the actual facts? Yes or no? You want to point, do you want to respond to the points of Yeah, that's right. Made? That's the way you are. You're showing great arrogance. And when I come back at you, you're calling me arrogant. Do you, you want to have a conversation? Do, do, you want, do you want to just leave? You want the to have a conversation. Things? You want to leave? No, the no, 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 no. no. I talk about the Trump it's thing. Every human being should know about the invention of email. And the fact that you say, well, I'm a computer programmer. So you have unconscious incompetence. And if you're willing to follow through the guy that's actually why, here, why, do, why do I have unconscious incompetence because, because I'm a computer programmer? Because you don't know what you don't know. But, but why does a computer programmer make okay. me have Listen, unconscious do you want to have incompetence? An conversation? Do you just want to be called skeptical? And the, and the point you again that I made, I kind of related it back to my. Why do you call yourself skeptical? If you don't want to actually look at the facts that because you're I actually wrote, believing. I wrote the first AI-based expert you. system. But you're gonna have a for, conversation. All right. I would never call it an invention. I would never call it. I would never lead with. I'm because the guy you didn't who invented get an it. actual copyright, which is the way software inventions are being characterized. So that means anyone who gets a patent, you don't call. It, what do you consider an invention? Listen, if you want to go through the facts, we can. But if you don't, then I don't even think you should have the name skeptical because you're actually following the original narrative. I'm just you're saying as a, professional, as a professional computer programmer, all the people I know, they would never oh, really? call well, why what you call Dr. did. Well, you they know what? They would never call what you what did an invention. An invention. So, really? Anyway, listen, I, I, you don't look, think listen. you're coming I with pretty you did. You're I not think what really you did skeptical. is amazing. I, it's skeptical. I, I don't think it dismisses. I don't think it diminishes listen, what you no, did. No, you know what? You're coming with predefined and you don't want to listen to the person who's still alive. Typically, the inventor of something dies. You mean I don't want to agree? Listen. You mean I don't want to No, you don't want to listen. You don't even want to listen. With, what, what no, you don't want to even listen. Things? You cut me off multiple times. You should go review this video. I'm going to review it. I'm going to edit it. Yeah. All right. So when you want to have a conversation, let's do that. And I'll be, we can do that. And if you want to talk about email, we'll go through the whole thing. If you want to talk you about say stuff like this all the time, you, you say with your, with your systems theory, which again, I'm, I think I'm smart enough to know, you know what? You don't even know who I am. Any bit about systems theory. You say only 10 to 50 people in the whole world. No, I said 10,000 people. You just got the numbers wrong. So you I'll, just made I'll a lie. The, I'll, you just I'll made play a the clip. false statement. I'll, we'll see. I'll play the clip. I don't think I got it down. I, our movement is as profound as the discovery of fire. Okay, he dropped. The, the, the other one that I got that I really like is, oh, the lawsuit of the century. So he's gone. You know, I didn't know if I wanted to go with the email thing right from the beginning. But I think right now, I want to get this raw. It was the right move because we could have spent an hour on all this bullshit that I like and respect the guy about, but this really got to the core of it. And man, the other thing is, you never drop from interviews like this. I don't think. I think you just, I don't think you look good. But he did. The only thing, the only thing I'm going to add to this is I'm going to add a couple of those 
couple of those clips that I got just because he says I got a factual error. Let's see if I did or not. These are from Dr. Shiva Truth Freedom Health Podcast, episode 1166, that Shane, who is a listener of Skeptica, who helped me set up this interview, is really the one driving me to do this interview. I have to say, I got halfway into kind of looking at Shiva, and I was thinking of not doing the interview, but I made this commitment that this is our journey shared, and I love when people get involved in the show and help book guests and help research the guests. So I really wanted to follow through with this and I'm glad that I did. Anyways, here, here are a couple of those clips. These concepts will lead you, you, your own consciousness raising no different than those people starting to learn how to plow. Oh, wait a minute. Let me make a plow and uh, let me, let me domesticate animals. You see the innovation we're in a world now, the innovation has to come from within you. And that is why Truth, Freedom, and Health is such a profound movement, because we have figured this out. Not only have we figured it out, but we have, it's not in some ivory tower. By the way, what I just shared, this concepts, 10,000 people know system science, but what I just shared with you, maybe 15 to 50 people in the world know this. Okay, so that's the first one. Let me see if I can find this. What is it? Our movement is as profound as the invention of fire. Hold on. You have to raise your consciousness to understand this. We have to build community and we have to constantly be calling this stuff out way ahead of time, way ahead. And that's what we do. And that is why our movement, our movement, everything we put together is as profound as a discovery of fire. Okay, enough. I didn't really want it to turn into a hate fest, but I guess I should have saw it coming. Dr. Shiva, you're welcome back anytime. I stick to what I said at the beginning. You are truly a brilliant guy in a lot of ways. And we're all complex. We all say all sorts of different stuff. So, hey, that's going to do it for this one. 